And there was one one, I actually dug this up. This is, this is actually my favorite. So I'm going to read the excerpt to you. Uh, regarding uh, uh, Weston and Walters, again, this is six months later. One woman wrote on a psychic prediction website. And it's fascinating, by the way. If you haven't been on the web, check out psychic prediction websites. There's a zillion of them. And they talk to each other, and they feed off each other, and they just go to town on these things. Here's, this is what the woman said. <clears throat> this is what I pick up. Difficulties with the car, possibly a ruse by the perpetrators to get them to stop. Then I feel strongly something akin to violence or a sudden act, a deliberate hijacking of their car, violence. Then I, lay, then I feel the woman laying, laying dumped, down, dumped face down on the unpaved road. It is not where people normally would go to picnic. I would assume not. <laughs> oh, look at the dead grandmas. Oh, come on, kids. Eat your hot dog. Um, I sense two male individuals in their 20s were responsible. Stubble hair on, this, on the face. Darkened skin. I feel that they were suntan looking, but not black. Dark, full sort of eyebrows. Both have criminal records. One has a tattoo on an arm. A dark bluish looking small tattoo with, with different colors. Maybe an eagle or a dragon. Something with long claws. One has very dark black, black hair. The other has dark facial hair. Facial hair on one of them is a bit of hair around the chin near the bottom lip, perhaps, but not a huge amount. And longish shoulder, shoulder length hair. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Very specific. You know, we've got tattoos, we've got the criminal record, blah, blah, blah. So, all this information and much more is pouring into the police department. And what are the police supposed to do with this? What the hell are they supposed to do with these numbers, these, these, these tattoos, these, these, you know, search the Ohio River? Well, the women were actually found on October 14th. They, again, they disappeared on, on April 19th. They were found on October 14th. And actually, is, as is often the case, again, th this, is a, this is one reason I'm giving this case is because it's very typical. It's a, it's a classic case down the line. As is often the case, if, if they don't find the body within the first couple months, the police aren't going to find the body, nor are the psychics. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, the two women were actually discovered, uh, as is often the case, by a passerby. It was a hunter and his son in a secluded field near, near uh, Interstate 71 in Kentucky. One of the women was found in the car. Another woman was found uh, about 20 feet from the car. And what police later reconstructed to happen was that they were on their way to the mall. They had missed the turnoff. They'd gone off and they'd gone around and they'd gotten lost on a side road. And they'd sort of come up along, uh, along the inter interstate, but not quite. They were trying to get back to the interstate, but they couldn't, they couldn't get back to it. And again, the women were, uh, I think, 80, 87 and I don't have the numbers here, but they were old. And, um, and so the women, they're trying to find their way around. They ended up getting, uh, they actually went through a farmer's field trying to find their way back to the interstate. And they actually gone into a, a small dry creek bed where the car stopped. They didn't have cell phones. And they died there. One of them was still in the car. The one who was more mobile had tried to go get help and she died of, uh, of, you know, of starvation or, or exposure. That's what happened to them. All the information that the psychics gave was wrong. Every little bit, the dreams, the numbers, the tattoo, uh, the Ohio River, 300 feet from the church, every single piece, every sing no nothing, not an iota of any of that was correct. Not a smidgen of it was correct out of all those. And yet, the police had to follow up on some of this. Now, this, is, this actually gets to an interesting question that I sometimes get. Well, don't the police look into this? Of course they do. Of course they do. The police have to, have to if, if there's a lead in a murder case, if someone comes up to you and says, I think I know what happened to this person, and the police don't follow up on that, you imagine, they don't, they don't know. It, it, it could be someone who is claiming to be psychic who's really confessing. It could be any number of things. But the police don't have the luxury of just sort of dismissing, oh, you're from a psychic, I'm not going to listen to you. No, no. The police do listen to psychics. They do. They have to. Because, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say, you know, the police, if something is really outlandish, I mean, they're not, they're not going to send someone to the North Pole to see if, if the missing person is there. But within reason, the police do and, and 
by protocol have to follow up as best they can on all these leads. Because again, you don't know. A, a person could come to you with information, you know, if, it's just like if there's a missing person, any of us come to them, they don't know who we are. We, we, could, be, we could be involved in it. We could be, who knows? The police can't just willy-nilly dismiss information that comes to them. That's, you know, that's not fair to the family. That, that's lawsuit territory right there. Well, so why didn't you listen to this person when they came up to you? Well, we thought maybe she was a psychic. Uh-huh, and you were wrong. And that'll end your career right there. So the police spend, in, in this particular case, they'd spent over 40 work hours, police work hours, when they could have been looking for these women, tracking down bogus psychic leads. So the other problem here is that, uh, so that, that, again, that's what happened in the case of, uh, of these two women. The, the, the flip side of this is that this is still the headline. If you look up the case, this is still the headline. The case has been solved. All the psychics were wrong. The headline is still psychic aids in search for missing women. The, the headline is not, because journalists don't work that way, psychics were full of it in the case of missing women. <laughs> psychics were wrong in the case of missing women because, of course, the news, the, what makes the news is psychics are involved in the case. And very rarely, on occasion it happens, but very rarely do, do, do journalists bother to say, hold on here, by the way, in this high-profile high case, and it happens on occasion, for example, with uh, Steve Fawcett, the, uh, the, the missing adventurer who was gone for almost a year. You know, occasionally reporters, when they were rehashing the story, would say, by the way, various psychic gave information, none of which turned out to be true. But uh, that's actually the, the exception rather than the rule. So, so again, you have these psychics that sort of come out of the woodwork with these things. And... Um, and the, the biggest problem is, of course, that much of the information is contradictory. It would be one thing if there was a person who's missing and the police uh, get information from five different psychics, all of them are saying uh, she's, uh, the, the, the missing woman is being held in the basement somewhere in southern Chicago by uh, you know, an Asian man. And if, if they're all saying this, interesting. That's, that's something you can work with. Instead, uh, you get wildly divergent. You get, you get all over the map. Um, you know, I have, uh, you know, for example, I have some of, the, uh, some of the different psychics that were involved in some of the high profile cases. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Smart, young girl who was kidnapped in, uh, I think, Utah. Over a thousand psychics gave information about that. A thousand different psychics gave wildly contradictory information as to where she was, what was going on with her. Do you, any of you remember how she was eventually found? Two people recognized her on the street, and they had cell phones, and they called the police. Elizabeth Smart was not caught by any information given by psychics. All that information, over a thousand pieces of information, totally wrong. Uh, Brooke Wilberger, some of you may or may not remember that case, over 500 psychics gave information on that. Local case, Chandra Levy. Anybody remember how she, how she was found? A guy looking for turtles in Rock Creek Park. Now, Sylvia Brown, our, our lovely Sylvia Brown, uh, actually gave information uh, to, uh, to uh, Larry King about it. Um, and she, she said that the, near water. She did the near water thing. I love that. Way to go, Sylvia. Near water. Good job. Um, and she said that, uh, oh, she also said that, uh, she, that there were some trees nearby. Um, although, actually, it was interesting because, because in that particular case, uh, Brown had actually said she was near, near standing water. Well, in fact, she was found on a hill. Now, I don't know what planet Sylvia Brown lives on, but <laughs> on a hill, water actually runs downstream. So you're actually, so it's not technically true that she was found near water. It was sort of, you know, again, what's near? 20 feet, 200 yards, a mile away. I mean, wh wh where do you go up with this?